Hello, my name's Tom Carpenter from YouCanStudyTheBible.com, and today we're doing a video review of MyStudyBible.com. This is a free online study Bible. If you have a copy of the Holman Christian Standard Bible Study Bible, or the HCSB Study Bible, then you really have the core around which this is based. That study Bible has extensive verse-by-verse -verse notes, or at least nearly every verse is covered, and it gives you the translation of the Holman Christian Standard Bible translation. So this site is based on the HCSB translation primarily, but other translations are also available. The thing about this site that I like so much is, of course, it's available on the web, no charge whatsoever works in your web browser. I happen to be an Internet Explorer, but it works in Firefox as well. And the nice thing is that it allows you to use multiple resources. So much like a local Bible software application like eSword, The Word, or the paid applications like the PC Study Bible, Logos, and others, it lets you view the Bible and then also view other translations of the Bible or Bible study notes and commentaries and things like that as well. Now, there are some things I really like about it, and there are some things that may get a little bit frustrating sometimes, but by and large, I find it to be a very, very useful study tool. One thing you will definitely want to do is register and create an account. You'll see a button over here on the left that says that I'm currently signed in, but right here it would say register if you don't already have an account. So you want to make sure that you register because when you do that, it is going to keep your settings, like, for example, the way you have it set up, the translation that you're reading, the study notes that you have displayed, and so forth. So you want to make sure that you do go ahead and create an account. Now, before I get into this at all, because it's something that's going to happen quite a lot as I go through this, is the simple fact that I want to share with you the thing that frustrates me about it. All the pop-ups that happen. For example, you may have just noticed I hovered over this and inadvertently I popped up these ads. If I go to new arrivals, I get a little banner that pops up. My notes pops up. So if I just accidentally go over these things, then we're going to have pop-ups. When I go over the Bible, maybe I'm just reading it and following with my mouse. Oops, it's popping up the Greek or Hebrew definition. So while I like that feature, you do kind of have to get used to that happening. That's not unlike the Word, however, which is a free Bible software for the PC. It can do that as well. Of course, you can turn it off there. Now, what I like then is we've got our Bible translation and then we've got our study notes. So, for example, I happen to be looking at Acts 2.38, which in the Holman Christian Standard Bible reads, Repent, Peter said to them, and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, to the right, we see that I have the HCSB study Bible notes. So we get the notes on that verse, and you can see notes on other verses as well. Now, I can actually choose to view different things. So I can go up to my library and you can see that I've got different Bible translations. I've got a couple of Chinese translations and I have the Amplified Bible and the American Standard Version. And if we come on over, here's my King James Version as well. Here's the English Standard Version. And note that I can read in parallel. So if I select that, you'll see that it gives me a new tab over here to the right and synchronizes it with the HCSB. So the HCSB says, repent, Peter said to them. The ESV says, and Peter said to them, repent. HCSB says, and be baptized each of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. ESV says, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. We can see there's a lot of consistency between these translations. If I go to the Amplified Bible, then I can see that it is also synchronized with this. And you can open up multiple Bible translations here that are available to you. If you go to the library and you're scrolling through these Bible translations, keep in mind that there are several of them, including some of the paraphrase translations, like the message or the New Living Translation. So if I say, well, I want to read in parallel the message, it'll bring that up for me as well. So, quite a few Bible translations available. You have the HCSV, the ESV, the Message, the NLT, the Amplified Bible, and the King James Version as well as the NASB. So, there are quite a few different translations that are available for you to peruse as you're using the tool. Now, as I said, one of the nice features is that you can hover over words and it will give you the Greek words. So, for example, if I hover over Repent, 
I can see the Greek word is metaneo. And then I can see that it means to think differently afterwards, to reconsider. From a morality standpoint, to feel compunction, to repent. I see at the bottom there, it is used 26 times as repent, five times as repented, and three times as repents in the Bible. So this is my Greek or Hebrew definition, depending on if I'm in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And I can see that right there. And that's great. Now, if you go to your cross-reference tab, you can see quite a few things. We have study notes. We have a dictionary tool. So that's right. You can go in here and use the dictionary. So if it says see more, it means that you're going to get to see detailed information. If it says more info, it means you have to buy the book. In other words, if you want it in part of your library, you're going to have to buy it in order to access it. So watch out for the difference between see more and more info. So here is Spirit. If I click on see more, you can see it gives me the full article out of Easton's Bible Dictionary. Now that's really cool because notice what it did for me. Let me go to a different verse. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 3 verse 1. So I just clicked on the number 1 here. Did you notice everything synchronized over here? And here's the cool thing. First of all, hour. Look at that. They went up at the hour of prayer. And then John is in there. And then man and Peter and prayer. We've got Hitchcock's Dictionary of Bible Names, John and Peter. Holman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, the word hour, the word John, the word lame or lameness, and the word man. So I say, you know what? I wonder what it has to say about lame or lameness. It's a physical condition in which walking is difficult or impossible. Now, here's the nice thing. I have a reference set to verses around the scripture that deal with it. For example, in the Old Testament, lame animals were not acceptable sacrifices. And I can hover over it, and it's telling me in the message, that is, if the animal is defective, lame, say, or blind, anything wrong with it, don't slaughter it as a sacrifice to God your God. I can also see what Malachi says. Now let me pause, divert for a moment. This is showing me the message. Let me show you something. If I go up here to options, I can say instead, the Bible translation for pop-ups should be a different one. So I can go with the King James Version or the NASB. I'll go ahead and select that one and then click Apply. So now when I hover over these, notice I'm getting the NASB. So you can adjust that. All of this is free. Everything I'm using is free. I have paid for nothing with this account. Now, that's the dictionary tool. There's a pronunciation tool. Okay, just in case you don't know how to say John. John. There you go. Now you know how to say John. And Peter? Peter. Peter. And now you know how to say Peter. So just in case you want to know how to pronounce something, and sometimes it's a more useful than just those. We have the commentary tool. Now this is where it's weak from a free perspective because we really only have Matthew Henry's concise commentary. Teachers you have to pay for. Word pictures in the New Testament you have to pay for. That's where we're seeing more info there. So it is lacking in the area of commentaries, but it certainly has other tools that make it very valuable. In addition, we have a video player. Notice this is a little sermonette that is covering Acts 3.1 through 4.12. And if I click play, it will begin to play it. You can see it's 12 minutes long. When God uses us to minister to others, we are always to give glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Here's Dr. Gene Getz. Notice what happened in Acts chapter 3, a very familiar story. And what it includes is the teaching of this man, Gene Getz who also created the Life Essentials Study Bible, which is a physical Bible that you can purchase at your Christian bookstore. So there are videos associated with the scriptures all throughout the Bible. You're going to find this as you're reading the Bible. There are video training nuggets that you can watch. Okay, now finally, we get to my favorite feature is the last thing I'm going to show you in this video review. And that is Word Study Tool. Watch the magic. Let's go to a verse. Let's take, for example, John 3.16. Yes, we can read John 3.16 here in the CSB. For God so loved the world, in his way he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The message tells us this is how much God loved the world. He gave his Son, his one and only Son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. The ESV reads this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Finally, let's look at the Amplified Bible. 
For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that He even gave up His only begotten unique Son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on Him shall not perish, come to destruction, or be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. So that's great. But you know what? What if you just quickly want to do word studies of all the key words in that particular passage? Well, this is where this tool really shines in my view. I go to cross-reference, select word study tool, and I'm done. That's right. It's that quick. I'm done. Notice four, and then the word study. God, and then the word study. Loved, and then the word study. The, and then the word study. World, and so on and so on. Every word of the verse has been broken down to its Greek word behind it. And you get the definition from Strong's. You get the Strong's number. So, for example, if you wanted to use another tool like the Complete Word Study Dictionary that's in book form or some other book like that, you can look up the Strong's number and read more information in those other tools about it. But right here, it already tells you that the English words used in the KJV, 186 occurrences of world, one occurrence of adorning, HCSB, 182 occurrences of world, one occurrence of worldly, one occurrence of all over the world, one occurrence of ornament. And so... This tool set is just super valuable when you consider how much it cost me to acquire this for Bible study. How much did it cost me? Absolutely nothing. Completely free, nothing to install on your computer whatsoever. If you're at a friend's house and he doesn't have Bible software installed on his computer and you wanted to look up a verse to show him something, it's online. Remember, mystudybible.com. I think you'll find the resource helpful.